<clears throat> so the last thing that we did was we created a page, but I'm not seeing the page on screen. That's because WordPress is very finicky. You have to tell it exactly what you want. And I haven't told it I want a menu. Clearly I want buttons to click on in a menu, but WordPress didn't know I wanted that. So we have to create a menu to display our pages. Let's go back to the dashboard. And on the left side we've got a section here scroll uh, hover over appearance and under appearance select menus appearance menus and at the moment on my screen on all of our screens it should be empty it shouldn't say that we've got any menus and on the one hand, this is annoying because I can add pages, and if I don't remember to add them to a menu, they won't show up on screen. But this is also very useful and powerful because I can have different menus. Let's say I'm doing a summer sale. So I'm going to have menu items that say, you know, summer sale, buy now, whatever. Uh, maybe I'm going to have a winter sale. So I can swap out the menu for another menu. I can create multiple menus and use them however I want. And sometimes also, depending on the design of my site, I can have a menu on the top, and I can have another kind of menu on the bottom left, let's say. So it does require us to set up a menu. Mine says, edit your menu below or create a new menu. Uh, click create a new menu. That'll simply just say, OK, we've got this empty box here, menu name. Uh, let's call it main menu. and then click Create Menu. Menu Structure, then it gets several things here. Menu Structure, Add Items, Menu Settings. So here is where we put the actual things on our menu, and then we also have to remember to say Show the Menu. So this is how dumb WordPress is. It doesn't know we want a menu, when we create one, it doesn't know where we want it on our screen. So before we fully create the menu, this always trips people up. My menu's gone. Well, yeah, because you never told it where it's located. <coughs> on our particular design, it says we have this theme, we have this design. And we have these locations to, say, to attach a menu to. The primary menu area and the social media area. This is going to be our primary menu, so select that. And I'm showing this first instead of adding stuff to our menu because I don't want you to forget this. You can create an amazing menu and forget to put it anywhere and then nothing shows up. So I'm showing you here first. Let's place our menu on the primary menu. Um, and then on the left side, we've got an About Us page. We've got a sample page. We can attach custom links and other things. But um, let's look at View All here. Most recent items, view all your items, search. If you've got lots of pages, you might have to search for them. I want to add a home button and an about us button to my menu. So you want to select home and you want to select about us and then add to menu. This will take it from here, put it into your menu structure, And it shows it's going to have a home button and it's going to have an about us button. You can drag this. Notice you get the four headed arrow. You can drag it so that I want about first or home first. And you can also do this. If you drag about a little bit to the right, like that, do you notice it gets indented? This is now creating sub menus. We don't need it at the moment, but let's say we had products drop down menu cakes, cookies, pies, drop-down menu, cherry pie, pecan pie, chocolate pie, whatever. So we can create sub-menu items by dragging them to be indented. I don't want this to be indented at the moment, so I drag it back out. Again, it's a little finicky here. If it doesn't move to the left, look, look, notice those dotted lines. You have to make sure the dotted line 
is out like that. So now they're on the same top level. There's home, there's about. We'll create a few more pages and such in a moment, and then we can rearrange them and make submenus. It's very powerful, very easy. Question? So, like, different themes, they have different structural themes? Yes, when we get to themes in a moment, we will see that we have different locations to put the menu in, different structures in our, in our, in our theme. That's always confusing as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Don't forget to save your menu. On the right side, click Save Menu. And now, visit site. Save your menu and then visit site. Yes? You wanted to add more than a moment about us. You have to create that somewhere else. If I also wanted a contact yes. link, I have to have a contact page first. Okay, okay, okay. So the thing has to exist before I add it to my menu. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I got if you go back to visit site now, home about. Let's go back to that menu and add a couple more things to it. Let's go back to dashboard. Appearance, menus. And so I've got home and about us. If I go back to view all, well, I want a contact page. But as I was saying, unless the item exists as a page, I can't add it. I have to create, it. I have to create a contact page in a moment, and then I have to add it to the menu, and then save it. So. That's something I have to remember to do. Or, I've got a button down here that says, automatically add new top-level pages to this menu. That could be a time saver. I'm going to create a contact page and a store page and a returns page. And if I have this turned on, they will automatically get added to my menu. I don't do this. Because it's not very smart the way it does it. It just throws it on your menu without any particular order. I think it's alphabetical, which might not be the best. <coughs> anyway, I go back here myself to rearrange it. So I don't think that's useful at all. It might help you by putting it on the menu, but if you don't organize your menu properly, what's the point? I'm going to come back to the screen anyway to fully organize my menu. Um, but look at other things that I can add. I can add pages. I can add categories. I haven't talked about categories yet. And we can add links. Let's add a link. We can add a link to some other website on our menu. Let's say I've got... Um, let's say I've got a, um, an Amazon product that I want to sell. So it asks for the URL, which is the address, and what text would you like to display. So we'll say Amazon.com slash my product, whatever. I don't have a real address, but let's say I had a product. I had something on Amazon. Whatever web address here will work. And the link text, the, the menu text that will appear here, I'll just call it buy now on Amazon. Remember to add to menu. Now, we're not going to worry about creating a shop page and such, menu items of shop and such yet. We'll get to that later. Uh, but here now, my menu structure has home about us by now on Amazon. Remember to save it. <clears throat> Remember to have selected primary menu here. If your menu does not appear, it means you haven't told WordPress where to display it. Make sure primary menu is on. Save it. Visit site. Now my menu has home about us by now. And that's an active link. I can click on it, and it'll actually go to Amazon. Well, a broken link because that's a fake link, right? <coughs> so.
So one tip, when you have any link from your website to another website, the better thing to do would be that the external website opens in its own tab. Web browsers nowadays, you have multiple tabs, and I would like it, and I'll show you in a moment, that when someone clicks on Buy Now Amazon, I want it to open in its own window, in its own tab. Because if I don't do that, someone visits my site, they click on Amazon, they go to Amazon, they browse Amazon, get whatever done they need to do there, they close Amazon, whoops, they closed everything, even my site. What I want is that a new tab opens up for Amazon, so that when someone closes the Amazon tab, my site is still there. And that will work by one little change back on our menu. Let's go back to our dashboard, back to appearance site, back to menus. Back to appearance and menus and then Notice we've got our menu items here, and they've all got a little triangle. If you click on the triangle for Buy Now, it gives you various details like, oh, I misspelled Amazon, or I wanted to change my text. Um, title, don't, don't worry about that, really. But you can open a menu item, any menu item. Uh, this is a custom link. Those are pages. And I can further edit. There's a menu item here that is invisible because, as I said last week, there are so many options in WordPress, some of them are hidden until you need them. And so there's an item that I want to activate here that says open in its own window. And it's not active until we activate it. On the top right corner, do you see screen options? Click on screen options tab at the top right corner. And we want link target. Show advanced menu properties, link target. And now I get a new item right here. Open link in a new window. That is not on by default because I guess not everyone needs it, although I think everyone needs it. So I have to activate it. Now that I've activated it, it'll remember it and it'll keep it on. But this is the trick to make an external link to make someone else's website open on my, I mean on another web browser. So I'm going to select open link in a new window there, save <coughs> your menu, visit site, and now when you click buy now on Amazon, it opens up in its own tab. When I'm done with Amazon, I close that tab and I'm still back on my site. Let's create, yes. Oh, but the homepage is still there. Yeah, my website homepage is still there. This, this is just a broken link, doesn't matter, but I'm saying that if we click on Amazon's link, it'll open in its own window. To get some practice here, let's create a <coughs> contact page. We're going to create a contact page because, again, spammers don't have a contact page. Spammers don't have a way for you to, to get a refund and such. But you, as a legitimate business, will, and this is good for your SEO, a way for people to contact you legitimately. Um, and I'll give some advice on that in a moment. So I want to create a brand new page, a brand new contact page. There's a couple ways to do it. One fast way. Do you see you've got a button at the top, New, Page. So I'm still on the, I'm still, I'm still on the visit site, but I can go to New, Page. 
if I'm not there, I can go back to the dashboard. I can hover over pages and I can add new. So three clicks instead of one. I want a new page. This one will be contact us. Click inside the editor, contact us. We should do the same thing again here. Set that to simply contact. So I'm going to click edit and change that to only be contact. And on the contact page, we should have contact information, a way for people to get in touch with you and such. There's some caveats here because the old way to do things would be that I would simply type my email address. But there's a big problem with that. Um, there are spam bots running 24 hours a day, every day, trying to find as many email addresses as possible to steal your email address and put you into a database of spam, and then your inbox will get full of spam. So it's not a good idea to put your email address naked like that, because every single email address in the world has this pattern. Something <coughs> at something dot something. Every email address, v.campos at cox.net, jsmith at uh, mail.it. So every email address has this pattern, something dot something dot something. Spam bots can be programmed very easily, and they can run all day long looking and looking and looking for email addresses. And if it finds your email address, because your email address is, is going to be in that pattern, it'll save it and you'll start to get spam. So you don't want to put your email address naked out there. You want to have a contact form. A contact form is more secure because you have to actually fill it out and click submit. And yes, spam bots can be programmed to do that as well. So then we attach to it a CAPTCHA. Do you know what a CAPTCHA is? A CAPTCHA is that thing that gives you those gibberish letters and numbers that you have to type in. That's hard for us as well as humans to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some more advanced CAPTCHAs that I've seen, this is one of the newest ones, it says it's going to give me nine pictures and it's going to say pick the three pictures that are cats. So I click cat, 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 and it knows that I'm a person, not a spam bot, because a spam bot doesn't know what a cat is. So we're not going <coughs> to put in just our email address like that. That's inviting spammers. We're going to add a contact form. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have anything built into WordPress at the moment that says insert form. We'll do that later. But if you want to make a note, my recommendation for a contact form plugin is one called contact form 7. What's a plugin? I'll talk about it soon. But this is a this is a little extra feature. Plugins are extra features we add to WordPress. And there's a contact form plugin that I like. I've used it for years. It's it's very secure. It helps protect you from the spam. I want people to contact me. They have a legitimate question or comment, testimonial, gripe, whatever. I want real feedback. But I'm not gonna simply put my email address. I'm gonna use a form like contact form seven. Um, phone number. Well, spam bots can be programmed to look for a pattern. Three, three, four. International phone numbers also have a pattern. One, dash, numbers, dash, numbers, whatever. Phone numbers have a pattern. So it's also not a very good idea to have a uh, contact phone number um, like that, especially if it's your home phone number. Let's say I'm running my business from my garage, which is perfectly fine. 
um, and I have a phone in, in the garage specifically for people calling me there. Um, I don't want people, I don't want spammers to capture that phone number and call me. So one thing that we can do is, my recommendation for this is, I recommend Google Voice. Google Voice is a free phone number. Um, I'm not going to lead you directly to do all of this. You can research it yourself. Google Voice, you can go to the Google Voice website and set it up and you'll get a free phone number. And the cool thing about it is you can get a brand new phone number for free and you might even be able to pick, you know, some cool letters. You know how you have 1-800-LAWYER. You could be able to get actual words for your phone number. And once you've got it set up, you can program it so that when someone calls that Google Voice number, it automatically rings your cell phone and the office phone number and the other phone number in the other room. So one phone number can dial all your numbers. And you just answer it wherever you, you are handy at, and you answer it. So I'm recommending this because instead of giving away your phone number at your house or at your business, you could have this Google Voice number, which also has voicemail. So maybe you set it up so that when someone calls that number, it automatically goes to voicemail, and it says, Welcome to victorsbakery.com. We will get back to you within 30 minutes. You're going to get a notification that says, New voicemail. And it, it'll even send you the text of that voicemail. So you can read it as a voicemail and then reply to it. And this is obviously more advanced than I want to get to, but you need to research if this seems useful to you. A Google Voice number instead of putting your email address, uh, your phone number naked out there for the whole world. And on contact forms, it's also very valuable to have an address. But under my recommendation here, get a P.O. box. They're between forty and eighty dollars a year, and yes, that one, you can't do that one for free, but this is not too much an investment to get a P.O. box. And I think most post offices nowadays let you do this. Because I can do P.O. box, whatever, San Diego, California, 91914. Um, but sometimes people see a P.O. box, that looks spammy. That looks classic spammy, like some fly-by-night organization that created a P.O. box. Some P.O. boxes nowadays, I know the, my local one, and, and sometimes people tell me theirs does it as well. Some P.O. <coughs> post offices now let you put the address of their physical location and then your P.O. box number. So that looks much more like a real business than P.O. box 21822. <coughs> the address of the business with the P.O. box number and then the location of the P.O. box. So these are my recommendations. For contact information, this will help your SEO. This will uh, foster um, this will foster uh, authority on your site. Um, they'll have way customers will then have ways to contact you. Yes? P.O. Box. The P.O. Box is... What's that? It's going to be the city of where that P.O. Box is located. So if you go one town over and you get a P.O. Box there, then, then their whole address will be the town over. Are there, are there alternatives? alternatives to P.O. Boxes? Yeah, you know, um, if you didn't want people to know your address in even like the city or something, at least for like identity theft purposes or something, are there alternatives to P.O. Boxes? Just the contact form would be fine because then that way you're, oh, it's, it's only a one way thing. This is. Uh, someone fills out the form, you're going to get it, and then you can deal with replying to them or not. <laughs> On this contact page, all of this that I'm saying here, to a degree, this is so 20th century. What's the 21st century way of contacting nowadays? Facebook. 
Skype, Facebook, Twitter, AOL chat, whatever. Um, any of these digital ways of communication, those are legitimate ways as well. <clears throat> uh, you can put in your Facebook page and then someone can send you a message there. You can put your Twitter, people can tweet to you. You can put your Skype or many other myriad social networks or chatting things. You can have WhatsApp, you can have Line, WeChat, Viber, whatever. You can have all of these ways to get in contact with you in the 21st century. It's up to you. I'm just saying, at the minimum, you need some sort of contact method. The very most basic, a simple contact form. When we get to plugins, we'll, we'll see a contact form specifically, but for the moment, keep that in mind. We want one way to protect yourself against spam and such is a contact form. I'm going to publish that. And then I'm going to visit site. Problem? Didn't show up here. No problem. I go back to the menu and I add it to the menu. So this again, I'm doing this like this because beginners always forget this. I created these pages. I can't see my pages. Where did my pages go? They're there. But we haven't told WordPress, show the page. So now you remind me. How do I get back to edit my menus? Just one moment. Yes? Back to dashboard, appearance, and then menu. Good. Question. To make these active, you would have to select it, and then we've got at the top here link. We would insert the link, and then it would be an active, clickable link. But the page we just created is not part of our menu. We will go back to the menus. We got home, about us, and by. And over here is contact. We never added contact. So go ahead and select contact us, add to menu. And actually, I want to rearrange this. I want contact to be after about us, but be careful. I want contact to be after about us. What I did was I put it under about us. Let me show you what this looks like. If you put any element indented, it'll be like this. This is about us, and it has menu items below it. Click. And there's contact us. And that's simply, when you, when you arrange these things, when contact us is indented. If I don't want it indented, I drag it back to the left. See how they're all on the same level. When anything is on a sub-level like that, it says right there, it's a sub-item. It's a drop-down item. When they're all on the same level, and now when I show you what it looks like, they're all on the same level. At the moment, I think for us it makes sense to do it this way, but you could put sub-levels if you want. You could put sub-sub-items if you want. You can drag items below other items and then just stack them underneath each other if you want. Also, when we get to the shopping cart and when we get to products and such, we will definitely do that because we have the main shopping area and we want to sell cakes section, pies section, cookies section, and then items below all of those. Our particular theme, our particular design, has two possible places 
to add menu items, something called the primary menu and something called the social links menu. In a moment when we talk about changing themes and changing designs, it, I'm going to start to say something over and over and over. People are going to start asking me questions, and my answer oftentimes is going to be, it depends on your theme. Because right now we've all got the same theme, we've all got the exact same items everywhere, same theme. Once we start to change our theme, our design, every theme author thinks theirs is the right answer. So we might have on another theme three places to put items. We might have one place. And so I'm going to say that answer many times as we go on. When someone asks, well, how do I do this and why is it like that? I'm going to say, depends on the theme. And that's the answer most of the time, because depending on the theme, your answer is your answer. On this particular theme, we've got a social links menu. We're going to create a new menu. We'll create a new menu, and we will then put items into this section, the social links menu. So at the top, here, click Create New Menu. I'm still under my Appearance Menus. And click Create a New Menu. And I'm going to call this menu here Social Media. Create Menu. Now that I've got more than one menu, this tells me here, on your primary menu, you've currently got the main menu attached there. Social menu hasn't been used yet, so select social menu, social links menu. And now I need to put items here. This particular menu the kinds of uh, links that we put into the menu are social media links. So it's going to be right here, custom links. Custom links. If you've got some social media, we're going to add them right now. If you don't, we will use my website as an example. But this is one of the things that I, that I stress in the SEO class. Part of modern SEO Part of the techniques to help get traffic to your site is to use social media. To be active in, only, in not only your website, but on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Snapchat, on blah, 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 on as many places as you can. And I teach concepts of that in the SEO class, which, which reminds me, this Friday is day one. Friday, 9.30 a.m. is day one of the social media class. Next Monday is also day one. I'm teaching it Friday or Monday. You can come Friday or Monday. Mondays is at 12 this time, 12, 12.30 noon. So if you've got time on Mondays, starting next week, I'm doing a class on SEO. That goes, that goes well hand in hand with this class. If you can't do Monday, I've got Friday, 9.30 a.m. starting this Friday. And in that class, I talk over and over about the importance of SEO, of uh, social media. You have a website? Good. What's your Twitter? What's your Facebook? What's your Instagram? And yes, you've got to do now more work to be on all of those other networks. But really, the most, the most trafficked websites, the most profitable websites, the most popular websites are active not only on their own site, but on the sites where other people are at. How many of you turn on Facebook and leave it on all day long? Maybe not you, but millions of people. How many of you are on Twitter all day long? Millions of people. How many of you are on Instagram all day long? Millions of people. So you go to the places where the people are at. They don't know your website exists, but you can find people on Google+, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Peach, the, one, the newest social network that you've never heard of that came out a month ago. So here, on our address, we'll type facebook.com slash. If you've got a Facebook page, put it in. If you don't, let's put in my company website, PMD Interactive. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. And the link is Facebook. The link text. 
the address is your company's Facebook page, and then the text is Facebook or whatever you want. Add it to the menu. And just for a few examples, I'll also add Twitter. Twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. And the link is Twitter. One more. YouTube. YouTube is a social network if you haven't really thought of it that way. YouTube is also a way to get traffic. It's by some measures the second most popular social network. Anyone know what the first most popular social network is? Facebook. Facebook has about one and a half billion users worldwide. And the population of the world is like six billion or seven billion. So lots and lots and lots of people all over the world use Facebook. That's why Facebook is very useful to generate traffic. YouTube has a lot of traffic, a lot of people watching videos, liking videos, commenting, following links, etc. Twitter also has like 320 million users. Instagram, 400 million users. Google Plus, another 300 million. So all of these networks have so many people using them. Pinterest. Add that to the menu. You can arrange them however you want. Remember to have selected social links menu and then save it. Visit site. Save the menu, visit site. And look at this, it translated those links into nice little icons. This particular theme does that. Not every theme will do that. I might have to get a plugin to activate these icons or whatever. But <coughs> this particular theme, once you put links onto your social menu, shows them as little icons. And all of these, unfortunately, we didn't set these as open in its own window. It's going to, you're going to click on the link and it's going to go to that address and then it's going to forget all about the, the website you came from. So it's going to go to Twitter and again I want this to open in its own window, its own tab. I don't want people to to go off to Twitter and forget all about me when they close the tab, they close my site. I want them to open in a new window just like I did with Amazon. Shortcut here. If you go hover there, it takes you back to the menus directly. Instead of back to dashboard, appearance, menus, you can go back to simply menus. And the point is I want to go back to my social media menu so that I can go to Facebook and say open it in a new window. Go back to YouTube. Open it in a new window and Twitter. When you go to someone else's website, some external website, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, it's a good idea to open it in its own window so that people don't lose your homepage when they go off to some other site. Any questions so far? Does that open in the new window option? Is that um, is that always there once you've chosen it, or is it just in each for each session? It should stay there once you've turned it on. Yes, it should remember that you want that 
and uh, next time you come back it should, it should still be there. Alright, so at this point we've got this site, we've talked about menus, and pages. we touched on posts last time, which, which are related to the blog. What I mentioned last time also was that we've got um, WordPress, we can use it as the classic blog platform. We can use it as a static home page platform, or we can use it as hybrid. Right now we've got the classic blog. If I add a brand new blog post, it'll push the older one down. And then if I add another one tomorrow, it'll push both of these down, and we've got something new. I don't want that. I want that on the home page, it always says the same thing. I want it to be static. But we can't set that to be static yet until we have a home page placeholder. So the home page, we're going to need to create a new page <clears throat> called home page or home or whatever. And I want to then move all the blog posts to their own blog page. So we'll also create a blog page as a placeholder. Let's hover over here, new page. or if you were already in the dashboard under pages new and we'll call this home don't we already have a home page we have a link to the home page but at the moment we don't have any sort of placeholder for content for the home page so we're creating a new home and it's just a very Basically, welcome to Victor's Bakery. Publish it. And so we've got a home page placeholder. Go ahead and publish it. Then at the top, we will add another one. So there's three ways to do it. New on the left menu, new at the top menu, or add new right here. Add a new page, one more new page. In this page, we will call blog. Read our blog and publish it. I'm creating two placeholders a home page placeholder to display static content when someone visits my site, and a blog page as a placeholder for all my new articles, my new blog posts. So make sure you publish the blog, the blog page. And now under pages, let's go to all pages. We've been creating a new page, but we can also see all the pages that exist. Under pages, all pages. Under posts, all posts. Under comments, all comments. But we can then view all of our pages. We've got our About Us page, our blog, our contact. Let's say, whoops, I misspelled something in the contact page. You can hover over any one of the pages you created, and you have Edit. We're not going to edit it, but if you wanted to edit any of the things that you created, you can always go back hover over and you get edit. Those items do not appear until you hover over the item you want to edit. Or trash it, or view it without editing, or quick edit. We'll look at that later. 
but edit lets you go back to make any changes that you, <coughs> that you made onto the, the page. I'm just showing you we've got about us, blog, contact, home, and sample. Uh, we're not going to need the sample. What should we do with it? Trash it. So we can trash it. Click trash. And very similar to, to your computer, when you've got something on your computer and you deleted it, whoops, I deleted it. Well, it's still in my recycle bin or my trash can. I can still bring it back just like in WordPress. Anything that you delete, it's still going to be in the trash. So if you deleted something, it's still in the trash to bring it back. Now on the first day, I talked about we have, uh, we can change our WordPress from blog to static. But on the first day I said we can't do it yet because we don't have the placeholders. We just created the placeholders. Home and blog. So it was a whole week ago and it was kind of technical. But does anyone remember? Where can I go to change that setting so that I can have a static home page? Anyone remember? Maybe? 10 points extra credit? <laughs> no? Okay. 10 points extra credit. Settings, reading. Let's go over settings and then select reading. So under your settings section, you've got reading. And look right there at the top. We saw this last week. The default is that the latest blog post will take over the home page. No, I want a static page. So turn on static page. And this is what we couldn't do last week. What's the placeholder for the front page? My home. Good. And what's the placeholder for my posts? Blog. So the terminology of this, I would like it for it to say, what does your front page display? Instead of front page displays. What does your front page display? A static page. What is your front page placeholder? Home. And what is your front page posts placeholder? Blog. Because this terminology is a little weird. Front page, what's that? But here it's trying to say, what's your placeholder? At the bottom, save it, and then visit site. My home page now doesn't have that you know, hello world blog post intro thing. It has what we created here, home, welcome to the bakery. And all my blog posts have been moved to the blog page, which is not part of my menu. So we have to go back to edit the menu and add the blog uh, page to my menu. You're going to hover over, you're going to go to menus, and you're going to add the blog placeholder page to your menu. <coughs> oh, sorry, before that. I am accidentally adding my blog menu item to my social media menu. That doesn't make sense. Well, I did that on purpose. Um, if you added a menu item incorrectly, like I did, you can open the menu item and remove it. And actually, you have to remember up here, when you have more than one menu, I was editing my social media menu. No, I want to edit my main menu. main menu select and then now on this menu I've got blog I didn't have that drop down on the main menu you might not have more than one menu we we had a main menu and then we created a social media menu mm -hmm.
so with, um, with the proper menu selected, I can add my blog page and then save it, and now my blogs show up in the menu. Home page, now I've got a blog link. When I click blog, it shows my blog posts. Question. Yes, and, and we will be talking about that because right now we've only got one blog post, which is Hello World. Later on, we're going to talk about more, adding more articles and such. Well, We could do something like that with categories. We create a category of one topic and a category of another topic, and then we create menu items of one blog category and another blog category. Now we can focus on each particular category. So at this point, we've... Uh, explored more about menus and pages. Um, we're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk about themes. That's another big topic of WordPress. Uh, it's about 2.40. We'll take a break until 2.50. When we come back, we'll learn more WordPress.